Good morning, Jags. This is Fahad and Chronicle here. Today is Wednesday, February 24th. Let's get started. Today we are going to present the episode eight for the Chinese Tech Demystified series that we have been running for several months now in Jaguar Media. And in this presentation, Chronicle is going to present the bull case for this under the radar, very strong, very interesting company out of China called Wimi Hologram Cloud, symbol W-I-M-I. So with that said, let's bring Chronicle here. Hi, Chronicle, how are you? Morning, Fahad. I'm doing great, apart from extremely hot and humid weather having here at the moment, but I'm doing pretty good. Looking forward to this one. I think this company has been uh, very fun for both of us to cover. Yes, it is. You know, when you first presented the pitch uh, to us and uh, I looked at this and I did my some own research on this at a very high level, I was pretty impressed by what was going on. And this is one of the very unique companies. You know, oftentimes I say this to a lot of Jack clients that once in a while something comes along that is very unique in the nature that it becomes a pure play on a category that is not really fully explored in the market. And it's a small cap at this time, but it's attacking an industry that has significant amount of potential. So who knows, this could become something major down the road. And then there's scarcity of assets as investment managers start to realize the opportunity here. And there's nothing else to buy in the space. Basically, that's what expands the multiple. And that's when everyone gets excited. So this is one of those. So tell me about it. Let's get started. Sure. So I, I guess um, I'll start by saying that at this moment in time, it's very, it's rather difficult to define exactly what this company is because um, currently they're mostly in the business of providing augmented reality holographic solutions. But just for the advertising industry, as we can see on the second slide, um, like they claim to be the sole developer of a third generation, six dimensional uh, light field holographic technology products. Uh, quite a mouthful there and right now um, they're mostly using this technology to provide advertising and public display solutions in terms of revenue they're making about 50 million dollars in trailing 12 month sales and at the moment advertising displays um, account for 83 uh, percent which includes the distribution of their proprietary platform so now having said all this fahad um, you might be tempted to label this company we me as just a fancy advertising agency. However, um, that wouldn't be a correct assumption because what's happening is this company is actually treating advertising as just a stepping stone uh, to bigger things because this is a very new technology and um, we all have to start somewhere. So why not start with something simple like advertising as a foundation uh, before moving on to build a larger ecosystem? Uh, like if we look ahead, uh, management is currently planning the putting the foundations in place to expand into other areas such as virtual shopping, 5G remote interaction, um, education, and even the automotive and face recognition industries. So there are, there are plenty of expansion opportunities here, which is why it's very difficult uh, for me to describe exactly what this company is at the moment. So in a sense, um, this is going to be a different kind of presentation. Uh, compared to all the other companies we covered so far on Chinese Tech Demystify, because what we're going to be going over in the following slides are um, the most promising expansion projects that uh, management is currently working on. So everything in this presentation is going to be about uh, the future. So I guess we have to give a word of warning here. This may not be everybody's cup of tea because it does require a leap of faith, um, even if the company is making some revenue right now. Sounds great. And the augmented reality is still so early in its game. And we know the all the major OEMs and smartphones are starting to develop that technology. Um, but it's not just the smartphones either, right? The industry is going to move forward with any kind of a screen, whether it's advertising on billboards or advertising on on screens, on bus stops, on any place else, in shopping malls, 
potentially having augmented reality built into it. That's essentially what this company is going after. And it, there's so much opportunity here that it's you're you're absolutely right. It's so hard to see exactly what a year, two years, or five years from now for this company may look like. But they did have a very good start with the advertising displays representing 83% of their sales. Moving on to the next slide, tell me about their biggest wins recently. Sure. So um, this one is um, one thing you may have noticed is that WeMe stock uh, surged a lot last month in January, right? Um, now, the main reason for this is because the company announced they have secured a patent uh, for their new 3D holographic pulse laser optical processing device. Um, this was a major breakthrough because this device is going to have a wide range of applications uh, which are listed here. But for now, uh, the company is choosing to focus on automotive sensors and autonomous driving uh, for passenger cars and electric vehicles. Basically, the way this device works um, is that it evaluates the differences um, in reflections between different sized objects. And then it collects that data and helps to display clear holographic images um, on, in the vehicle dashboard in the cockpit. Um, like what makes this so special is that the company has reportedly um, achieved an image processing speed that is 80% faster than the industry average. Um, and this is because WeMe is capable of collecting 500 to 550 data blocks per space unit uh, versus the pure average of 40 to 50 data blocks. Um, I think this is going to help the company win some contracts with auto, manuf auto manufacturers down the road. Um, so this is just one of the ways which, in which the company is branching away from just advertising revenue. Just incredible how the dashboard views of in inside of your cars could potentially change from here. And this is a directional, this is a direction that we can see it's coming in a lot of the new tech, you know, and this is one of the reasons why I really like the company in the U.S. Um, uh, some of the other ones that we have presented in the Jaguar quarterly outlook in the past, such as CRNC, C -R -N -C, as we are all familiar with, cutting edge technology for dashboard technology for automobiles. Moving on to the big contract they signed recently with China Mobile. So what's up with this? How big is this? So uh, 5G is another promising growth avenue that's opening up for WeMe. Um, last week, the company put out a press release saying that it won the bidding for the second phase of China Mobile and Meta Cloud Platform's remote interaction holographic project. Um, China Mobile, as we know, is the largest telco globally um, with just under 1 billion total subscribers. And they've been working on remote interaction technology ever since they achieved the world's first ever holographic video call on 5G back in 2018. So, um, there's no de there's no further de further um, details yet, but I suspect this contract that WeMe um, has won has something to do with building on this achievement. Uh, but whatever it turns out to be, it's going to be WeMe's first foray into handheld uh, 5G. So I consider this to be a free option of sorts. So let me ask you this, and I'm gonna sound complete stupid over here and i'm gonna just make it appear like i don't know anything about this and i really don't actually but tell me so you're you're what you're list you are you're having a video call on your phone with your friend and the face of the person if your friend will pop out of the screen like a 3d vision and you'll be able to talk based on this augmented reality platform that the company has has signed with 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 china mobile is that what we're what we're thinking here in terms of technology or how would it look like um the screen is still going to be flat but it's going to look like your your friend's face is going to look like it's coming out of it even though it's not <laughs> so it's, it's sort of like wearing 3d glasses so that was my next question do you have to wear 3d glasses to see something like oh, this no. or no no, no, that's what that's okay. So augmented reality is really, but then if I if I think of it this way, then talk then talk about for example movie theaters, right? So if you go to if you want if you go watch any of the AMC, um, you know, uh, you know, go to movie theaters where sometimes you can watch the three D movies. Are they going to be replaced by by AR in the future as well? Could be. Um, so if 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 video calls are achievable, then who knows where we can go on to. 
And that's what it comes down to, right? Because we're talking of smartphones and augmented reality here, but what really, how big is the market? Pretty much anything glass, pretty much anything glass that reflects back, isn't it basically become subject to some sort of augmented reality technology being built in in the future? I mean, I guess that's the direction. If you're going to take a look at it from a total addressable market size, the concepts around it just become so big in nature. And that's what I mean. This company is so early in its face, such a small cap signing all these major partnerships. We really don't know how the future may evolve in years from now. And that's why I like this very exciting company. Moving on. But uh, holographic technology to classrooms. This is the third area from the company. Tell me about this. Mm -hmm. So this one's going to sound pretty futuristic because the company is planning to work with the government in the future to integrate holographic video technology with school textbooks. Um, and they're also planning to eventually enable teachers in urban areas to holographically project themselves into the classrooms of rural China. Um, basically, the next evolution of live streaming your lessons, um, which we covered in Yu Dao in episode three. Um, now, no doubt, this is going to take years to achieve, but it's another potential avenue um, to look forward to. Wow. So basically, virtual teachers showing up in the classroom and um, uh, <laughs> words popping out of the books, essentially, and all kinds of fun stuff that comes to mind that could happen from all of this. Moving on, um, they are also working on a virtual shopping uh, network. Tell me about this. Yep, so um, the, the last project we feel is promising is virtual shopping. So Wimi has already developed an intelligent billing system as well as plugins to be integrated with devices and smart glasses. Um, and what they ultimately plan to achieve with this is to enable people to interact directly with Weemi's holographic advertisements and essentially shop and pay uh, for the displayed goods and services. So Fahad, just imagine you're walking around in public with your phone or maybe you're wearing one of those smart glasses, right? And then all of a sudden you're walking past uh, one of Weemi's holographic advertisements um, and maybe it's for the latest Callaway golf clubs. So you're looking at this advertisement and you're feeling a need to own these clubs because uh, maybe because your golf game is suffering lately and you want to blame your current golf set. So um, <laughs> what Weemi wants you to do is instead of going to the Callaway store, you can just pull up your phone right there and then and interact directly with the holographic advertisement to make a purchase immediately. And then you can select whether to pick it up in the store or have it delivered um, straight to your home. So that's what Weemi is trying to do here. Or if you are looking for an outfit that you want to buy online, or if you go to shopping centers there physically, you know, you can just go look at the screen and it will basically take your picture and then, yep. um, uh, you know, you're wearing the clothes on and then you can see all around in 3D from all directions exactly how you're going to look like. And the same thing with shoes and hats and really any other kind of accessory. And that's what I mean. This is the future of the shopping you know what the shopping will look like it doesn't really matter it's in the virtual stores or it's in the it's in the physical stores but this is why it is so promising and i could see anything with screens basically moving in this direction and and advertising along along with it also coming so very interesting company now uh, on this is the last slide, but I just want to emphasize that naturally with any kind of hyper growth at very early stages this stock is going to be quite volatile, as Chronicle mentioned earlier, that this thing has already risen by um, uh, 50, 60 percent just in the past month or so. But it's a $600 million company with the potential that it could be a couple billion, maybe in the long run, much, much more, maybe becomes an acquisition target in the future as well. Am I thinking this correctly here? Yep. Um, so just wanted to reemphasize what you just said. This is like a leap of faith kind of stock for now. Um, on, on the one hand, the company still has existing advertising revenue to fall back on um, if their expansions don't go to plan immediately. So this is not completely speculative. However, um, you know, at 13, 14 times sales, 
you know, if, if things go wrong, we could easily foresee 50% drop back down to $6. Um, but um, if all of these things like automotive sensors and 5G contracts, you know, virtual shopping, if they all turn out nicely, and if we continue to be in a, you know, weakening dollar bull market environment, then I do smell a multi-bagger. Yeah, sounds good. And um, naturally, as as the audience listening to this will also uh, are probably also recognizing that uh, unlike other presentations that we have done at Jaguar Media, we tend to go a lot more into financials, the balance sheet, the income statement, moving parts of the company. But here we basically cut out a lot of those pieces really did not go into the numbers. That's precisely because this is essentially a development phase, a niche category leader. So the focus was most more important on actual product itself and the demonstration of how this could be a beneficiary of AR trends in the future, rather than worrying about what the financial statement projections look like today. Because really, we do not know how the business model is going to gradually change over time and what kind of revenue product revenue mix will appear in front of us so goes back to the point a bit of leap of faith but a very very interesting opportunity all right chronicle thank you very much for doing this fantastic and that's it from us for jags uh, please reminder that this entire presentation as well as the research note um, will be attached with the video on Jaguar Media website once it is published later today or tomorrow. That's it from us. We'll see you next time.